Hello, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to another joint meeting uh, amongst members of the Hong Kong Study Circle and Hong Kong Philatelic Society, uh, sponsored by uh, FIAP, the Federation of Inter-Asian Philatelic. I mean, we are really quite very grateful that uh, they actually sponsor us every month to have a meeting. And um, yeah, uh, well, thanks very much. I think uh, Dr. Prokop might might come later on. Um, and and um, yes, uh, well, uh, thank you very much for for for, for coming to the meeting. So, um, well, basically, uh, right, if, if, if uh, nobody wished to uh, uh, jump start, I would like to uh, just do a follow up to last month's Ingalls' uh, 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 this meeting, which was actually quite a formidable <laughs> meeting. And it, was, it really is a hard act to follow up. But uh, you know, he probably round up all these uh, so, sort of uh, exotic destinations and dead countries, uh, which uh, uh, you know really is a very is a magnificent collection. Well, anyhow, so um, I, what I've prepared tonight is just a few things. Uh, some contributed by other members, um, uh, and uh, I'd just like to share my screen. Uh, let's see. Okay. Right. Can you see it now? Yeah. yeah, I can see. Can you see? Right. Okay. Okay. Right. So. Uh, no. No, I can see. Yeah. Huh? No. No. It, yeah. 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 It is a uh, FIP page. Uh huh. Can you see it now? Yeah, it's okay. It's you okay. can change this. Yeah, can change this lab. Right. Okay. So uh, this is actually a follow up to uh, last month's um, presentation by uh, uh, Ingle uh, about uh, Hong Kong mail to, uh, to so called dead countries. I mean, I'm I'm so glad that actually um, Ingle opened up wide, you know, to, to the scope, because otherwise, you know, dead countries to me are the countries that do not exist. So, but now they, but, but really, if that is that's going to be a very hard, because I mean, uh, I mean, most, unless you really have a country that changed the name, et cetera, uh, it, it's, it's going to be difficult. Anyway, okay, so so um, here's what, what I have, I managed to gather in the last month. Um, uh, the first one actually is a, Interesting cover, um, Hong Kong to Algeria. Now, Algeria, uh, of course, everybody knows it's in North Africa, was a French colony until it, it became independent in 1962. And uh, here, what I'm here showing is, is the 1851 letter from a missionary in China uh, to a sergeant major in, in Philippe Vier, I can't pronounce the French, uh, yeah. uh, by, by UK and France. Um, and it has a. Um, it went by the PNO uh, to, uh, to 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 London, and then and then it received the uh, colonies article thirteen uh, 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 chop on it because of the eighteen forty three Anglo French Convention uh, for unpaid mail uh, uh, and was sent under 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 that convention. And um, the reason why, why I said it's from China is because of this four here, which is actually is a, is a ship letter rate uh, from elsewhere. I mean, actually the cover actually didn't say where from, it could be from elsewhere, but more, probably the most likely place would be, would be Canton, uh, where um, a, a, a lot of the missionaries actually channel the letters by Canton and then send them through Hong Kong. Uh, Interesting uh, that uh, well, well, upon arrival, it was charged 15 decim. So the 15 decim is actually made up of uh, 10 decim, uh, the, the UK rate, and 5 decim, um, the, the French rate. Now, interesting that it actually it was returned, and it's got this word, en congé. I'm sure that uh, Philippe uh, would, 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 would probably confirm that if my translation is correct. It's, uh, the soldier was on leave. And uh, it was returned 
uh, and all the back stands on the, uh, you know, all the back stands, and it went back to crap in France. Anyway, so uh, that that's a, that's a rather interesting letter, and um, I think there's only maybe one or two going to Algeria at that time. Anyway, okay, so here we are. Here we are. Uh, now, uh, Philippe is now called Skita, uh, city in northeastern Algeria. And you can see the little dot there. And this is Algeria. And this is the current flag of Algeria. OK, the next one is a postcard. Uh, quite, I look actually quite common with it. Polar. Uh, Polar or Pula uh, was, was a part of the Austrian Hungarian Empire. Uh, at that time, and um, well, it's over rate, it's got over rate one cent, so which should be four cent rate, but uh, it was sent by sea, and it took about one month uh, to arrive. And so here we are. That's the Pula or Pola here in the um, in the uh, in the southern tip of the Istrian Peninsula, uh, and it's quite interesting that um, uh, Pola actually it's it's. Mostly, I think it's probably now still Italian speak a lot of Italians there, and um, and uh, and then a part of, and then it, and after the World War One, when the Austrian Hungarian Empire dissolved, then it became part of Italy. But after World War Two, it was occupied by the Allied military government until 1947. Then it became a city in U then the Yugoslavia. And which, of course, you know, broken up in 1991, and it's now it's a city of Croatia. So here's the, here's the little map there. Here's the place near the sea. The other one is another postcard to uh, Fumi, remember Fumi or Fum or whatever. Uh, also, at that time, part of the Austrian Hungarian Empire. Um, and this is uh, uh, in, the, in the Edwardian period, 1906. Uh, nothing special about the postcard rates, uh, but it actually says Austria-Hungary at the bottom, uh, with a with a indecipherable arrival cancellation. Uh, this this is actually from our member uh, John Tang. I think he's, he's not here tonight. But anyway. Well, thanks, thanks, thanks for his contribution. Um, so. And there's another one that's also to the same place. And this one actually is a bit more interesting. Well, that last card was interesting. This is also quite interesting with the, actually posted from uh, mail from the Kowloon. He has got a small uh, Kowloon KB chop. Uh, and, and then on the same dates, uh, they, they get the stamp canceled Victoria, Hong Kong upon uh, crossing, the, crossing the harbor. And it, it went, of course, uh, with a postcard. It was actually sent by sea, and it took one month. So where's Fumi? Fumi actually is in is, is, is Italian word, and now it's called, I don't know, Rijeka, Rijeka or something like it's a Croatian, uh, located in the Kavna Bay here. So here it is. This is the, this is the place, OK? And there was, it was part of the, uh, the, the empire until after the First World War. And then it, of course, became a city in Yugoslavia, and then now it, it's part of Croatia. Okay, the next one is Zagreb. Zagreb is, as you know, is in, is in Yugoslavia. Of course, now <laughs> it, it, this is in the George, uh, the King George VI period, um, and it, it's, it's, a, it's a foreign service letter mail. Uh, and uh, and uh, of course, the Sagra and uh, uh, Yugoslavia is broken up, and it's it's part of uh, 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 Croatia now. And here's the Sagra here. Okay, right. Now, the next one. Oh, this is <laughs> this is a is a first day cover, but it's quite interesting that uh, it's actually um, addressed to Nazareth in and Blantyre. Uh, so, if, as you know, that June the second, nineteen fifty-three, is actually is the first day, first day cover, uh, you know, first day of issue of the uh, of the of um, the late Queen's uh, coronation, and, um, and and it was it was sent by sea. So where where is that? Uh, actually, Blantyre actually is it's named after a, a Scottish mission. So as you know that uh, those of you who actually collect. 
like uh, 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 South Africa thing. Uh, uh, um, Nazaland, of course, is a British protectorate uh, in Africa, and um, and and um, and it's part of the, the Federation of Rhodesia and Nazaland at what time. And when the Federation was dissolved, Nazaland became independent from Britain in 1964 and now called Malawi. You can see here, somewhere there, yeah, that's that part. I guess uh, there used to be some Scottish mission. Okay, so the other one, still in Africa, Belgium, Congo, Albertville, 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 or Albertville uh, in Belgium, Congo. Um, uh, this is um, uh, again in the, in the George VI period. Uh, it's a, a, a service service letter, um, paying the service rate, uh, and he's got. Um, uh, it was censored. Maybe it's just going to a to a very unusual place. It was censored, and uh, it's also got a patriotic uh, V hand stamp of, of Hong Kong uh, recorded. Uh, I think only in the month of August, 1941. So um, you, yeah, there, there are lots of them around, but still every time when, when it comes out, you know, the V sign, everybody wants it, uh, an example of it, no matter where, you know, no matter which destination these covers going to. Anyway, they're quite sought after by collectors. Anyway, where is that? Uh, actually, El Albaville is, is, is now, it's called Calami, 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 Calami or something. Is 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 a, is now the town? In, well, this is Belgian Congo still exists, uh, but now it's actually became independent in 1960, and it's known as Democratic Republic of Congo. Right, this is everybody knows about this one: Hong Kong to Georgetown, British Guiana. This card, I'm sure, caught attention of a lot of bidders. You know, on eBay. Um, because I think uh, I mean I would say thanks to thanks to Richard Whittington actually who pointed out that uh, airmail uh, from a brand office uh, at that time pre-war uh, was extremely scarce and um, and this one's actually from Kowloon City which actually obviously closed down after after Japanese occupation uh, it, it's a rare airmail it's a Postcard. It's a registered postcard. It's a three dollar three dollar ML rate uh, plus twenty five cents registration fee, and uh, it, it's going to a really rare destination. You know, British Guiana, Georgetown, Demerara, and uh, and uh, it's quite interesting that the seller actually made a mistake by calling this POW. I mean, it's here it says POW. Um, but actually, POW is, 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 is not a uh, prisoner of war. It, it is a Chinese surname or name. Uh, you know, the, the guy actually is called P.O. Pao On Wu. But you see, unfortunately, both Wu, W-O, or P.O.W. Pao could be the, the family name. So either he's Mr. Pao or Mr. Wu anyway. So what, 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 what the card, the Chinese, Chinese uh, we, we could read the Chinese, um, it's actually, he wrote to his uncle in um, Georgetown asking for money. And he escaped from uh, uh, Guangzhou Wan. Uh, Guangzhou Wan is, uh, is, is a French, was a, is a French uh, territory in, 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 uh, 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 in, in southern China. And he, he came from there and then settled down in Hong Kong. He ran out of money and he asked uh, his uncle for for, for, for some uh, money uh, to be sent to him in Hong Kong. So this actually went, we uh, uh, says by PAA, Pan Am, uh, to, to San Francisco. And then it then by the US, uh, American internal uh, airmail to Miami, and then the foreign airmail route five uh, uh, down south, and then six to, uh, and five and six to Georgetown. And a very interesting card. It fetched something like, oh gosh, I think over 2,000 pounds or something. So, yeah, it, it, it's probably, I call it rich, it probably is unique. I, I probably do so. It, it is, uh, but you know, whether actually a collector bought it or maybe 
you know, after all these uh, discussions on Facebook and etc., the the, the the seller probably thought it too good to be true and he decided to buy back and then and then put a bigger price, uh, a bigger bigger estimate on the, the public auction. I don't know. Anyway, nobody actually owned up buying it. Anyway, so <laughs> anyway, okay, so. Uh, I, I think, I mean, through, through Facebook, et cetera, I said that, uh, you know, really is uh, to Hong Kong mail to British Guiana is very rare. So here's another one actually to George Pound. Um, but this one, of course, is much, much less glamorous. It's only a just surface mail, uh, uh, 15 cents, uh, uh, empire rate. Uh, uh, it's good destination, but we is much less glamorous than the previous. Right, so of course, you know, Georgetown is the capital and the largest city of British Vienna, or Guyana nowadays, of course. Um, and then you can see this in, in, in the location here. Right, so um, Hanoi, now, Hanoi, uh, uh, not a lot of mail actually going to Hanoi. North Vietnam, now well, it used to be North Vietnam, and uh, in those days it's called Indochina, or Indochine, um, and uh, this is this is going this is going to well, we see look like uh, a French uh, a Monsieur le Directeur um, uh, of the French bank, uh, Chinese French bank in Indochina. So um, it's a lot of uh, 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 what well, the office of the French occupied. Uh, the, uh, that area, and, well, you find a whole hole in China, and and here's here's one of the to to Hanoi. Now the other one is in an older, much older cover in 1868, and there are several uh, covers from this correspondence uh, to Saigon. And interestingly, this this is um, uh, this cover uh, was uh, was sent by the by the um, the French packet. Uh, Hubli, um, and uh, it, it, it's attracted a, uh, a, a seven pence per quarter ounce or 14 cents 14 cent Hong Kong rate. Um, very expensive, I mean, compared to, to the British packet, which only, uh, I think that it was only about eight cents uh, per half ounce. So, but that was, uh, anyway, it, 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 it's, it's, a, it's a nice cover. Um, Anyway, so here we are. Hanoi is the second largest city in north of Vietnam. Just a little, little um, uh, uh, information about Hanoi and Saigon for those uh, who actually uh, look look at the, look at our presentation on the website. Uh, so there you go. So you can see you can see the Hanoi and Saigon. You can even know where they where the two cities are. Um, and nowadays, of course, uh, Saigon is, is called Ho Chi Minh City, um, and uh, we, are, we know all about the Vietnam War, etc. Anyway, so I think that's the end of all I've got. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so, so, so uh, anyway, uh, no, thank you, thank you for your time uh, listening, and uh, if you have any questions. Uh, uh, I'll stop sharing. Okay. Yeah. So uh, please ask if, if I if I could answer. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I'll start with a question on the uh, cover to uh, Saigon. Yes. Uh, sorry to Hanoi. Hanoi. Um, uh, well, I forget which city it was the one to Indochina with the forwarding agent Mark Grün and Company. Yeah. That's is that listed? I, I've never seen that forwarding agent. Mm, 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 mm. I, I must I must check the book on forwarding agent. Philippe, does it sound familiar to you that G R U N and company? No, I tried, I, I, actually, I, I tried. I thought that the um, uh, the, the mark is very interesting. I tried actually searching it at Google it, and I couldn't find anything. Um, no, have, I'm not familiar. Name. You know, I, I have recorded the forwarding agent whenever. Whenever it was written forwarding, because otherwise it's very difficult to distinguish uh, those marking, whether they are security marking, return address marking, or yeah. forwarding agent. Okay. So 
so I have not recorded this one. So it just could be. It. No, I, I think I think that's not a board. I think it, it's just the company's uh, mark. You know, there, there's some of the companies yeah. that the mark. Uh, what would you call it in in, in the, uh, the the American lingo? I think corner corner something uh, uh, advertising um, thing. Um, so, so there's some of them actually, they, they were forwarders, but they could also send their own mail uh, using the same, they, they put the same chop that it's not necessarily a, a forwarding agent per se. Um, okay. Anyway, yeah. Um, right. Um, uh, and, Can and, I, I was interested in those um, Vietnam covers mm, mm, mm. Um, on the dates, uh, mm. because Post-war, weren't they? some of them were post-war, weren't they? I mean, yeah. they, the the, um, the certainly in in Hanoi, the Viet Minh start gained control pretty much straight away after the end of the end of the war, didn't they? So, did they yeah. not get mixed up with the with that? Were, you know, at what point did it be? Did it cease to be French Indochina that they were going to and? Uh they have uh, got through. I think it's after the Second War, right? I think it was as late as uh, like, um, I want to say even like 1951 or something. Mm. I, I, I think it depended, but I thought that Hanoi would have been, Hanoi, the, the Viet Minh were declaring independence straight after the war, 45. Whether they had effective control, I don't know, because of course it was a very nasty war that developed yeah. there it's quite it's quite complex i mean uh, uh, the, the the history of uh, you know during during that time and then you have the french and then they they got defeated and then came back and then the, you got the Viet Minh and uh so um as i i, I haven't really actually done a, a, a in-depth study in that the envelope it's just that something that i yeah. found in in a box so i mean maybe it's worth uh, 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 checking it out. Um, yeah, that's one for the that's one for the history books. But I seem to recall that the famous battle where Ho Chi Minh defeated the French was in 1954 mm -hmm. at Dien Bien Bo. Dien Bien Bo. And that was that was when it really ended the thing. But you're right, Nick. It was declared by the um, insurgents or by the communists or whatever forces there were trying to get yeah. Vietnam to be an independent country. But the official thing, I, I know that that famous battle, that that first major defeat by a by a Asian country to defeat a colonial power in Asia, that was 1954. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, so. Okay. Right, Richard. Good to see you. Okay, so uh, um, if if you well if you have no further questions, then maybe I'll, I'll move on to the next section if I can actually put it on. Uh, let me see. Oh, where is it? Okay, uh, let's start. Share this right. Okay, so this is this is actually a a, a, a response to uh, Richard's uh, uh, excellent presentation um, last month about the uh, early Trans-Siberian route uh, before it was closed down by the Russo-Japanese War of 1904. Um, uh, yeah, he 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 shows some pre very very nice covers from Hong Kong, which uh, I I looked through my collection. I didn't have a single, 
<laughs> so <laughs> they're not easy to come by. Uh, anyhow, I, I don't know about any other members. But anyhow, so uh, but but you see what I uh, uh, I, I collect something else. I I, I collect Russian. So I remember that he actually showed a uh, a, a, a card, postcard, uh, with a ten kopeck stamp on, uh, obviously over francs, but it was actually carried on the on the on the first um, on the first uh, first flight on oh, no, 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 uh, the first sailing of of the, of the ship. Uh, let me see. Let me see on the blue screen. Okay. Now here's 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 this this link if you want to follow up this uh, this excellent presentation go to uh, if you want to see Ingalls then start from the beginning if you want to see Richards go to one hour and twelve minutes and then you can find Richards uh, presentation here's here's a link actually for for his part and he actually showed this this this, uh, uh, this the table of the of the of the month of the of the uh, the sailings of the of the ships of the steamers uh, of the Chinese Eastern Railway Company steamers from Shanghai to Downey with with, uh, with the Shanghai BPO Mail connecting with the Trans-Siberian service. Uh, so I've got a a, 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 a North China Herald uh, Gazette the newspaper band here actually. So this is this is this was actually sent on the on the first trip, uh, according to this table. Um, if you look at it, the first trip, the sailing number one from Argon on the fifteenth of November, nineteen o three. So this is actually sent uh, a postmark on the on the uh, uh, November fourteenth. So he would have gone on, and it's got written it got, got written by Siberia then. So it would have gone on the uh, the, the Argon uh, and to to Downey and then by rail to Europe. But fortunately, I mean, unfortunately for us, and the, there are usually no back stamps of these things. So uh, we all trust each other's research. So so I believe that 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 it, I'm a little bit surprised that that even you know newspapers actually went through this route. But uh, anyhow, so th this is this is. Um, uh, like like a mate of his uh, his postcard the ten to the, the ten copet rate. Um, the, uh, the of course the um, the alternative it went by the the P and O motor, but actually that didn't sell until 18th of November. So uh, maybe maybe it, it, it actually went by the railway. But the other one, second one, is more interesting. Um, now I've only bought this recently. Um, and by, by a very famous uh, eBay seller from the UK. And uh, primarily, you know, because of the, I think it, I, I bought it for the stamp rather than, rather than the, uh, the, the, the date. But it's actually uh, on the back, it was, a, it was a, a, a picture postcard and somebody actually wrote, arrived Shanghai January 10th, 1904. Uh, and then oh, by ship, obviously, and then he wrote the card and sent it uh, on and uh, on the on the on the fourteenth. Uh, okay. Now, now the thing is, uh, he hasn't got via Siberia written on. And the steamer Mongolia sailed on the seventeenth of January. So that there's is the trip number ten. So you can just go back here. Yeah? And you can see trip number 10 is Mongolia sailed on the 17th of January. So now the question is, it could have gone on by Siberia, or it could be held and then sent by a later mail, uh, you, know, uh, you know, maybe a week later. I don't know. I mean, you know, but again, there's no back stamp. So this is this is uh, just one of these these, these, these interesting things uh, that I bought. Um, right. Let's see. Now this one, uh, it's I would say too, it's called too late for Siberian route because it was it was sent from Ningpo with uh, with a type E uh, E one postmark, uh, nice picture postcard actually inscribed. 
uh, by Siberia. And, uh, and unfortunately, it took 13, Mongolia left on the 7th. And it was sent on the, actually sent on the 6th. So, I mean, uh, with the Shanghai mark on 8th, it would probably be Mr. Uh, uh But uh, luckily, there was a, a piano motor that could carry the car. Right, so I don't know whether whether actually Richard's got any comments, particularly on this one. Uh, Andrew, yeah, lovely, thank you. Um, if you go back to the the table, please. Yes. Outside, oh, isn't it? Yeah. As, as it says there, the uh, what I did was these sailing numbers were the. Uh, steamers that carried mail going through the Shanghai British post mm. office. Mm -hmm. So before number one, there would have been some other sailings which would have been used by the Russian uh -huh. post office in Shanghai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But well, there were certainly mail before 1903 uh, going by Siberia. Yeah, it's yeah, fantastic. Yeah. And for sure, it would have gone on the, the Argon, but yeah, Argon, just, yeah. A, just, a, just a point about right. the sailing numbers stuff as well. That's right. You, even without the even without the inscription. But for this, for the for your postcard, uh, for, of course, the four copex is interesting, <laughs> as yeah, we've yeah, discussed, right. you know, discussed at length a while ago. But um, I. I I'm sure that this will have gone via Siberia. Yeah, yeah. makes no because, sense. I mean, it, it, it just took too long to wait for another boat. Uh, uh, and I, I've checked that there were no other sailings. The German, I think that uh, there was the French. The French was usually, um, uh, I, I think, later, about one week later. Yeah, so uh, anyway, interesting. So right, okay, so. Um, I'll stop sharing and uh, let's see. Um, we've got um, anybody got anything to discuss? Um, I actually have a question for a cover, a, po a modern postage do cover. Um, I can't figure out the rating of it. If you don't mind, I'll share the screen and ask the questions about it. Yeah, sure, 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 you can. Yeah. Why not? Can you see that? Uh, yes. Okay, so I, I studied the rate on this. It's 10 cents going to the UK in 1974, underpaid, 10 cents was the local rate. Mm. But the postage due part is what puzzles me because it says 40 over 50. Mm. So it's saying, um, it's saying that it was, Short paid 40 by cents. 40 cents, which mm -hmm. says 50, so saying 50 cents for the rate. But mine to service rate. What's your service rate? What's that? Surface rate. Yeah, the sur but to my knowledge, the surface rate to the British Empire in 1974 was 30 cents up to oh, one okay. ounce and 60 cents a uh, second rate step. So it's either 30 or 60, not 50. So yeah. usually post, postmen doing um, postage due don't get the rates wrong, especially mm -hmm. the surface standard rate. So I don't understand this one. Can anybody Have they not doubled the deficiency? Me? Have they not doubled the deficiency? Because that was yeah, what the they double... did at some stage. Yeah. So if it's yeah, 40 no, it cents, is doubled the in... deficiency... The deficiency was 20 cents, which makes the, the rate that it should have been 30 cents. Okay. But why is the uh, lower number 50? That's what puzzles me. Is that the UPU surface rate? So foreign countries surface rate as opposed to empire, because that's what they were supposed to quote. 
Maybe. Okay. You know what? I didn't check that. Yeah. But it, um, I. But you're right about the double deficiency being uh, twenty times two. Yeah. 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 But, the, the, but how, those how, fractions were usually over the international surface rate. In most, uh, was I think that was the UPU role, rule. I don't. It didn't always get applied correctly. That's another matter. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. All right. That explains it. Okay. Thank you, Nick. Well, actually, it actually didn't explain everything. So why why is it, why is it a four p uh, uh, to pay? Um, the conversion. I don't have the uh, access to the how they converted uh, the forty cent, forty Hong Kong cent um, double deficiency to four pence, but I'm assuming it's a straightforward ten to one. Oh, okay, okay. So it's a fifty the, cent the, the, that would be five p. Yeah, the 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 rule again. At some periods, and I'm sorry, I, I don't have the dates because they did get changed, but the rule was that you put 40, the, the fine over the international surface rate from your territory, and that mm -hmm. gives you a fraction, which then is the international surface rate of the receiving current country multiplies their international rate by that fine to arrive at what they've got, what they collect. So if the British postal rate overseas in 1974 was 5p, that would come out at 4p. To be honest, I can't remember that far back what our postage rates were, though. I think 74, mm, let me see. I, 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 was, I was in the UK in 74. Um, and they're very cheap. I think it's only the, I think it was uh, like, uh, uh, like 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 seven p, uh, local rates about seven p, something like that. Very cheap. Hmm. All right. Well, it's such, such a long time ago. <laughs> I think in seven. I think seventy four. The local rate was still threepence. Oh, it's still threepence. Oh wow. Okay. All right, but I, it's a good question about the postage due amount because. Um, I do belong to the postage due mail study group, and they're going to have a meeting, I think, in December. Yeah. And I'm going to put it up for them to decipher because they have access to all the yeah. conversion rates, the UPU conversion rates. I don't have that. I don't know how to access those. But uh, my colleagues there, they, they can tell you right away. But anyways, I thought it was a bit of a curious thing of the 40 over 50. But mm -hmm. thanks for that explanation, Nick. Right. Ingo, please find out because I mean that really is, is very. Uh, there must be some kind of conversion table or somewhere because uh, uh, nowadays with all the different uh, 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 the denominator, you know, with 50, 60, 100, 120, 140, really is just uh, very it seems very complex. And actually, whether yeah. actually the, the 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 clerks actually got it right or wrong, I mean, no, no we haven't got a clue. So yeah. And and the rules kept changing. Uh, yeah. It's yeah. Very, so it's. The postage is actually a very complex subject. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, even up to the modern days, I mean, uh, yeah, they, they could put a mark. I mean, you've probably, you've probably seen a few uh, uh, study circle uh, journals arriving. With yes. <laughs> you know, and, uh, and they keep changing, you know, maybe, uh, you know, a couple of years ago is a different number. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. We'll do a postage due uh, meeting once, but uh, not for a while because I got a lot of studying to do. That's right. That's right. No, when you're ready, let us know because uh, I, I collect the postage due as well, but, and they're so <laughs> so difficult just to understand. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. when you have actually figured something out, uh, you know, let, let let me know so that I can organize a meeting just on. Yeah. What what is what is the manuscript above the fifty? Is that a twenty, a forty, or a what? I think it's a forty. It's a forty, yeah. So that's the that's the number of Hong Kong cents. Due. Mm. Not necessarily. Mm. It just could. According be to di according to Nick, that the def the 
the right rate should have been 30 cents. Yep. So the deficiency is 20 cents. So double the deficiency yep. makes it 40. Yep. Yeah. And that so is 40. Hey, good. And anyways, once I hear from my postage due experts, uh, yeah. I'll come back to this and uh, give the explanation in detail. Okay, good, 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 good. Okay. okay. Thanks. Thanks for sharing. Right. Okay. So, um, right. Uh, okay. Uh, let me see. Uh, I, I still got something uh, to show. Well, I got Let me see. I show this one. Right. Okay. Now, this is this. Uh, let's see. You. Okay, right. Can you see? No. No, not yet. Okay. Right. Okay, right. Yes. Okay. Can you see now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is very much in the limelight uh, uh, recently. I think in the last uh, week or so, when the, there was a, a sale uh, in Hong Kong uh, with uh, one of these covers. Uh, so, I won't, I won't advertise the sale. <laughs> I'm sure you probably all know. <laughs> anyway, so here's here's the, uh, uh, the, the the page of the auction catalog. It's a, it's a well-known cover, uh, and um, and we, we are talking about uh, the military post office China Oval, uh, which uh, is said to be applied uh, in Chusan, uh, Zhaoshan, the Chinese near Ningpo. An island where all the all the all the uh, 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 British uh, uh, forces uh, stayed, and uh, it is actually mentioned there uh, only two covers known, or maybe you know maybe they, they they got the description wrong, or maybe the two covers actually originated from Ishikawa, who actually had two covers in, in the catalog. But uh, this one is actually uh, and, uh, dated to 20th April 1842, patiently. Uh, it was actually from uh, the, it first appeared in the, in the Ishikawa 1980 sale at Sotheby, and then later on it went to Musuhara. And uh, it was estimated as at uh, 1,500 pounds at that time. And then realize, uh, se uh, you know, seven thousand four hundred. So a hell of a lot of money in, in, in nineteen eighty. Anyway, so um, and then it, it and then it reappeared in, in last week's auction. And uh, apparently, I was actually I was watching the bidding, and apparently it, it stopped uh, at about fifty five five hundred so five hundred fifty thousand, and and that was uh, 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 that was. The, including the 20% commission, it was 624,000, I think, possibly a, a new record uh, of, 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 the, of, this, uh, of this market. Uh, I don't know who actually bought it because uh, I, I've asked either they don't own up or, but anyway, probably will appear uh, 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 fairly soon in the same exhibition. Anyway, it's a very, very, uh, uh, I would say iconic item. Uh, so the other cover is this one, also from the Ishikawa sale, and they both covers actually appeared uh, on the same page. Uh, but uh, in the Ishikawa catalog, you you you, you wouldn't find this the front piece. I, mean, I I I can't remember where I got this from. But anyway. um, so that that was the uh, the, the, the 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 one of the lots that was uh, the, the earlier lot, which is the. Uh, five six five six nine and it was estimated a thousand and it went for a very similar figure 
from well, that was in 1980. Uh, it has actually, hasn't actually come up for sale. Uh, uh, but you know, all these covers have a lot of history, uh, which and then, unless actually you you, you get you, you actually you you, um, you open it up and actually view it, I mean you 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 wouldn't able to tell you know what's it's not a wrapper, it's actually the letter. There's something written inside, and uh, it's probably uh, the war about the of war anyway. Uh, I don't know whether whether actually Neil actually came across this cover from somewhere. Uh, and, and actually seeing the content. It seems that the, the collectors now that they nowadays are more interested in the contents than the, the market because <laughs> as you know that the, the recent sale actually the letters with interesting uh, contents about the opium war actually fetch a, a lot of money and much much more than what the, the postal markings were. Anyhow, so uh, don't know who's got that. Now this one, I'm sure that you will know. <laughs> so, so uh, this is actually from the Edwards correspondence uh, uh, going to Western Superman. Uh, and it was, it was actually dated uh, 3rd of April, 1842. And uh, I, I'm sure that uh, Richard uh, probably would, would probably want to do some research on these things. If I'm, I'm not very good at history, so. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure that uh, Richard could actually, you know, maybe write an article on all these items and uh, tell us what they are all about. Anyway, so uh, so this is explained and it's very interesting that it's got this uh, uh, soldier sailors uh, uh, Siemens uh, uh, mark uh, with you know, with a four pen uh, uh, payment. Anyway. So uh, the, the marking is actually uh, struck across the back, uh, but it, it's, it's, a, it's a nice cover. This one is actually is a, a critic pan, um, uh, and uh, it's also from the Edwards correspondence, uh, dated also in April, the same date as the other one, actually, because actually Ed Edwards, uh, Clement Edwards, actually had two correspondence, one to Ceylon. And the other to the Western Superman. So this one actually we wrote two letters on the same day, one to the Western Superman, and the other one actually to to a company in, 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 in Salon. So so these are the two letters uh, written on the same date, probably carried by the same ship. Anyway, this one is actually is, um, also very similar with the uh, 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 Siemens, uh, so Siemens letter rate. Province, and also from Edwards correspondence to Western Superman, and this was actually from Beckham. I believe that is the, the latest uh, of the of the five known. So I don't know whether when you knew or other others have uh, got any other. So this is certainly these are I I looked through um, a mix uh, archive which I've got. Uh, he hasn't got any more. So. Uh, so Maybe the thumb will turn up. I haven't actually seen any fakes for the mark yet. So, uh, uh, unlike the um, 1842, the Hong Kong Post of 1842, where uh, there are some very crude fakes around, but I haven't actually seen any fakes of, of this mark. Interesting. Anyway, okay, so that is my lot. I go back to the quote scheme. Can I just add that the first one you showed, Andrew, was also ex Sir Percival David? Yes, 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 that's right. Oh, the, yeah, 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 yes, yes, yes. Uh, the one that sold recently, right? Yeah, that, that was, uh, per, yeah, that's right, that's right. Yes, yes, that's the one. Yeah, you probably know all the problems anyway, rather than you know, some of them actually dated back. You know, it was half a century. I mean, half, <laughs> half a century. So, um, anyhow. Uh, uh, okay. Andrew. Yes. Andrew. Yes. Uh, Richard. Um, I think uh, there are two military post office hand stamps. Mm, mm. And the one is the one you've shown, it's fantastic stuff. And then the other one is the Hong Kong one, which there's only one. Yeah. Uh, apparently, 
apparently sent by the Batman of uh, General Burrell, yeah. Major General Burrell. Sorry. Yes, yes, yes. But one of the interesting things is that, of course, Burrell is associated with the Hong Kong military post office mm -hmm. location, which I think at the time of that cover was on a ship because they were frightened to death of getting the plague if they stayed on land. Mm. But Burrell was actually in Ningpo, uh -huh. I think, when the military post office uh, China mm. hand stamp started appearing. So it's mm. quite possible, although I haven't fully checked it out, yes. that he's responsible for both. Mm. But I, I'm pretty sure that uh, you in your spare time will do some research and publish <laughs> an article on the on this very interesting uh, uh, couple. <laughs> someone, someone, someone told me once. I can't remember who it was. That when I <laughs> when I was retired, then I would have lots of spare time. <laughs> complete, complete, complete rubbish. <laughs> 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 right, right, okay. So, um, anyway. yes. Um, well, well, that's that's all I have uh, for today. But uh, obviously, we can. Uh, there are other things to be discussed. Um, uh, unless any any anybody got anything to show. Um, oh, Adrian, Adrian, welcome. Hello. Where are you? <laughs> Thank you. Where are you? Where am I? Yes. I'm in Northamptonshire. Oh, right. Okay. Okay. All right. 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 Good. Nice to meet you. Yeah. yeah well, Good. Yeah. Funny enough, well, um, yeah. in 1972, when that was it, 72 or 74, that cover you showed, I was yeah. in Hong Kong at that time. Oh, right. 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 Great. Great. Yeah. 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 All, all great people were in Hong Kong at that time. <laughs> <laughs> Another yeah. one, Richard. Yeah. 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 Andrew, Andrew, I have something which is totally unrelated to dead countries, but if you okay. if you want a space filler, I can do something. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Plenty of time, plenty of time. Yeah. Uh, shall I share the screen? Yeah, sure. Ooh, Jesus, what's going on here? Okay. Right. A very, very spectacular. We can always count on you, you know, every month. You have something. Don't know about, about that. <laughs> um, so um, I'm not entirely sure whether I've shown one of these before, but anyway. Uh, stop me if I did. Um, I was uh, looking through some uh, rubbish that I have here um, the other day, and I thought, oh, what shall I show if called upon? And I've decided to do two of the uh, sensor markings in the British Army in uh, Hong Kong in the Second World War. Um, Hong Kong, for some reason that I've never been able to find out, used uh, an original marking for the arm, for the Royal Air Force. They, they followed what everyone else did, basically. And the Navy was a little bit of a hodgepodge of things. But the Army used these large inverted triangles with numbers in them to define uh, either the regiment or uh, a location uh, where the sensors were. And I chose two of these. Um, um, the number 112, there are two recorded, as far as I know, uh, one 14th of March 1940 and the second one 20th of October 1941 and they were allocated to the Indian Army uh, in Hong Kong and number 121 
there's only one recorded of the 8th of October 1941, and that was uh, allocated to the Royal Artillery of Hong Kong. Um, thankfully, I can show you the three of them. Um, the first one is a 112 cover uh, posted in Kowloon uh, to Dublin. Um, it was from a uh, captain John Fortune Lawrence, who was serving with the Royal Indian Army Service Corps in Hong Kong. And in 1940, he was interestingly, I guess, the assistant commandant of the Hong Kong Mule Corps. Excuse me, there's some poor person heading to the hospital nearby. Um, I found out uh, through the India office, I think, in London, about this this guy uh, and so on. And he would have been located, although he he he, he obviously, uh, being an officer, stayed in the Hong Kong club, as you can see on the back of the envelope. But the he would have worked in uh, Whitfield Barracks, which is where the Hong Kong Mule Corps were established, uh, as, were, as were a number of the other Indian troops. Um, it was dispatched by its... Where'd you go? I think we lost Richard. <laughs> okay. All right. Maybe some connection problem. All right. Okay. Uh, well, he must be coming back. Uh, anyway, uh, we 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 can we can uh, while while we're waiting, uh, we we can actually say congratulations to uh, a, a couple members who actually uh, uh, got. Some really good results from the, the Cape Town um, Royal Sam exhibition um, just last week. Uh, first of all, oh, one of them is here, PC. You know, PC actually showed British military posts in Hong Kong. It's a five frame exhibit, and he got a large Vermeer award. Well, where's PC? Can't, can't see him. Yes, we say congratulations to you. And uh, I think it was the first time in FIP. And uh, I've, I've actually seen his, uh, he actually sent me a copy of the exhibit. And I think it, it, it's very well done, um, uh, you know, for, for the subject. Uh, and uh, and then of course, the other member is, uh, is, is a new member, relatively new member, called Ivan Wong, and he also got his first uh, a large Vermeer medal um, for a, um, let me see, cancellations on the 1880 and 1882 issues of Hong Kong Queen Victoria Two Cents. Uh, very specialized exhibit, uh, just only one stamp. Uh, and, uh, you know, I mean, he had a lot of material for five frames, obviously, uh, 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 to get that kind of award. But uh, I think I wish him, I wish him well. I mean, uh, 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 that uh, you know, he's obviously going to show uh, eight frames next time, and uh, let, let's see what happens. You know, it's, um, he was, he he's very happy. And I talked to him, and he said, "Wow, he's, he's the first large Vermeer award 
uh, uh, you know, in my lifetime, you know, it hasn't actually been showing for, 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 for you know, I think only about three or four years, and um, and uh, but he's been collecting for a long time, and to get that kind of uh, two cent uh, stuff, maybe uh, one day I'll ask him to uh, just talk about it. Uh, oh, which is coming back. Large Vermeer at an international FIP is very significant uh, achievement. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, uh, you know, I, I would always tell uh, people that, you know, gold is what you, you should aim for, but some exhibits you just cannot score gold, basically. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, you probably, you, I mean, you, you, your friend Sam probably tell you that, uh, you know, Large Vermeer is already a very, very high award. Uh, that that one should be very happy, and um, and a goal is a bonus. And but if you're, yeah. if, you're, if, you're, if you're happy to spend another million or something, you might get a large goal. <laughs> anyway, yeah. you need you need the right subject. You need the right subject. You need the right subject. Yeah. You know you can't yeah. you can't just show anything that you expect to get a large goal. Mm. Uh, anyway, so the different. Speak yeah, speaking of uh, FIP exhibitions, uh, is anybody here planning to go to uh, Essen in Germany in May uh, 2023? I am. Good, I'll see you there. I'm the Canadian commissioner for it, yeah. so I'll be there Please. carrying exhibits and uh, doing all the work and having a lot of fun. That's good, that's good. That's good. Maybe we can have, uh, I don't know if there are enough coming, we can actually do a meeting. We should try. I mean, it, it's it's only a it's only in a, uh, Essen. It's only a, a short flight from from UK. Yeah, Six hours or something. I don't know. So um, you find the UK guys shouldn't worry. Even just because you uh, practiced Brexit, I think Germany will still welcome you to a stamp show. <laughs> don't don't mention the World Cup defeat. It's a it's a visa we can't allow this. No, no, no. Hey, you know, Canada is in the World Cup this time. First time since 1986. <laughs> it, the problem is we're in a group with Belgium and Croatia and Morocco. So oh, no. our first game is with world number number nine. <laughs> Croatia is, is, is a tough. Yeah. yeah. And Belgium is also tough too. Yeah, yeah they were they were the second place last time. Yeah. But yeah. um yeah, no, for Germany, that that show, it's going to be a big one. They they got very oversubscribed. They were going to uh, do 2,800 frames, and they ended up doing, uh, they got submissions for 3,800, and they've upped it to, I think, 3,000 or something they're going to have. So it's it's a yeah. big show. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. I'm going to have my 1945 uh, exhibit there. Yeah. Oh, well, PC, PC is our national commissioner, and uh, he, 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 he announced the disappointing news to a lot of uh, uh, potential exhibitors. So yeah. I, 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 I am one of the lucky ones. So, yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah. anyway. Andrew, so that Andrew, my, fun. my apologies. My apologies for the uh, technical hitch earlier, but um, happy to try again if uh, yeah, you, you have the patience. Good? Go ahead. Okay. Um, can you see that? Yeah. Okay. Maybe I'll just leave it like this. And hopefully it won't screw up. Um, we've been dealt with this one, this Mr. or Captain Lawrence. Um, the Hong Kong Mule Corps, you can see a photograph of them in, a, in action on the left. They used to uh, pull the howitzers, the mobile artillery, around uh, mainly the New Territories. Um, but when, when the Japanese invaded and they evacuated there, they left a lot of them behind, but some were taken over to uh, Hong Kong Island from with field barracks. Um, it's quite an interesting story in itself, how they got them across. Anyway, um, this, 
the second one of these 112 covers that I have, uh, I haven't been able to fully uh, establish, but it's uh, ML letter to Uttar Pradesh in northern India uh, from uh, Abdul Hakim Khan, who was who ha was the officer at Jamadar, which is around about second lieutenant in uh, our British Army. And he was writing uh, some form of thing through uh, and sent by the CNAC feeder route, the dollar fifty ML postage uh, to Calcutta, where it was censored and so on. So the two covers are shown here are, as far as I'm aware, the only one, one, two covers around. But obviously, uh, one will come up, or more than one will come up. But the next one is a one, two, one cover. There's only this one, no. Um, it was posted at Stanley on the 8th of October, 1941, and sent by surface, presumably via America, to uh, Southport in uh, Lancashire. Harold Baxter was a gunner in the 5th anti-aircraft uh, Regiment and he served with the Seventh Battery, which was located at West Bay, uh, round about Chung Hong Kong. I think the fort was in now would be in the middle of Chung Hong Kong um, on the peninsula. Uh, he was captured on the 20th of December. So that must have been the first wave of Japanese moves along the south, south uh, coast. Um, and he, he was uh, a POW and was hospital, hospitalized a number of times. Now this 121 handstand would have been used by the orderlies at Stanley. Uh, who would have, who would have uh, dealt with the mail coming to and from uh, serving men in the 7th Heavy AA battery. Uh, I'm not able to uh, decipher the censor officer's name. You can see it in red, um, but we'll get there. Okay. My apologies for the earlier mess up, but uh, that's it. Mm. Great stuff. Mm. I, I thought I've seen some of these, uh, you know, one, two, one, and one, one, two. Are they really that scary? Yes, I think so. Really? Oh, okay. Okay. Some, some, some numbers are scarce and some are not. Oh, so, so, so if, if, there are lots of you, triangles, right? Yeah, yeah, there are yeah, lots of triangles. Uh, okay, okay. They, okay. they go from number 101 yeah, yeah, yeah. through to number 136. Uh, but some are missing in, some of them don't exist or we don't ah. know of any examples. But, um, some, like if you have, if you have a, a 120 number mm. on the uh, in the triangle, then don't go rushing off and booking a massive holiday. <laughs> 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 they're, not really, <laughs> they're not really, not really that. Uh, they, the 120 was used at the head, headquarters, the mm. bunk in the Falstaff, Falstaff House, and in uh, the bunker underneath mm. and, and whereas some of them like uh, there are many examples of the canadian ones but the indian one indian army ones and some some of the other numbers are quite 
quite difficult to find. Hmm. Good. Good. Uh, right, thank you, Richard. Uh, any questions from the floor? Right, okay. Uh, well, I just want to uh, say a few things about uh, Nick. Uh, uh, he, he, well, other, other Nick and I has decided to start a new column in, in the, uh, in the journal. It seems that we, we have, uh, I think the, the study, the study circle board has a little discussion about how to, um, make the society more active. It seems that it has been lying low for quite a little while and, uh, there seems to be less and less contributors to, to our journal. Um, not because we try to restrict the number of pages, but because there's, there's no, there's simply no people, no one writing. Um, so we've actually decided that instead of writing, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, research articles like Richard, you know, uh, I, I think uh, we, we, what we, we want to start is, is a, maybe a, 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 an interesting item in the collection that you can just write about one or two items. Uh, say maybe a page or two pages, uh, just to get uh, a lot of members involved in, in our journal. Uh, I think that that's our aim. Um, I've tried it uh, uh, in our uh, uh, the Telic Society's uh, the newsletters many many years ago. It's quite successful uh, for a while. Um, I'm sure that uh, every single one of you would have something uh, interesting or or some questions that. That, that we would like to ask, for example, you know, like, like Ingo, you know, you know that cover, you know, okay, I mean, it may be a thousand dollar cover, but it's, it's certainly, it's, it, 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 you, 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 you know, there are lots of mystery about, about these things, you know, markings and things like that. So, so why don't you just drop uh, 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 Nick a line, you know, you know just write, write a few lines or half a paragraph or, or not half a page, you know, <laughs> Half a page or something uh, about about something or some queries, something that some members would be able to 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 answer, to give you a good answer. Um, so I think that that's that's a, that's a start because after all, if you want to research on something, it, it takes maybe a long time. It takes a long time. So anyhow, yeah, we used we used to have a section called member snippets. Mm -hmm. And I think that's exactly what you're referring to. Little, little articles like, yeah, exactly that, that 10 cent underpaid cover mm -hmm. with a postage due. It's, uh, it might not be a thousand dollar cover, but uh, after showing it, it changes from being a $1 cover to being maybe a $30 cover. So, <laughs> you know, market, market your material by writing it up and showing it to the yeah. world. It, uh, Gives it prominence and uh, gives you it adds value. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> you, you got to watch Richard every every month because I, you know, he gives you all kinds of information that afterwards, uh, you know, the price start going up. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, Richard, <laughs> thank you very much for a tip off. <laughs> anyway, all right, okay, yeah. so. Um, uh any anything anything else uh, anybody want to to say or before um oh i see uh, dr prokop is actually here he's, he's returned from from the cape town um uh dr prokop was the was the president of the jury and um, and obviously the fip president uh dr prokop would you like to say a few words about the exhibition Hello, good evening, uh, everyone. Uh, you want me to talk a bit about uh, Cape Town? Yes, why not? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Well, uh, it was a good show, and the venue. I uh, I think uh, if you have seen the uh, pictures of the uh, venue, of the exhibition, it was uh, quite uh, roomy. Facility is uh, very good, and the. Uh, Exhibits, but un unfortunately, many uh, exhibits had uh, not shown up, or some um, had been withdrawn because of the persons uh, invited as a jury. Oh. But overall, I think uh, the uh, exhibit tone is uh, very good, and congratulations to uh, the Dr. PZ uh, who won the uh, 
nice ward and there are all the uh, Hong Kong uh, exhibitors who had been well in the Cape Town. Mm -hmm. And uh, like uh, Ingo said, uh, Germany uh, Ibra next year will be about, uh, if I remember the uh, numbers correctly, about 3,400 frames mm -hmm. for, for the uh, exhibition. And uh, I think uh, everything is uh, going well. And uh, as you know, the German, they have two kinds of frames. One is uh, 12 pages per frame, the old oh. style. And the new one of uh, 16 pages uh, per frame. Now they are working on uh, to get all the frames to be uh, 16 pages uh, oh, yeah. per frame so that it, it is a standard that we use. So we will see how it goes uh, later on. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think everything else should be fine. And the uh, custom uh, process, they will uh, update the commissioners uh, soon because they are trying to make it uh, as easy as possible. So I, I hope that uh, there won't be any problems. Uh, Dr. Prakot, may I ask a question? Yes, please. About, about, about uh, Ibra, uh, would there be meeting rooms for society meetings? Uh, for society, uh, yes, you can make a request because there will be uh, meeting rooms for uh, the uh, commissions, mm. you know, the philatelic uh, commissions. Yeah, because there so are a lot those of rooms, uh, Those rooms can also clubs. be used for, for society meetings if, mm. if it is available. Okay. Mm. Okay. So if you want to use some uh, of the rooms, then uh, you may uh, write uh, Walter Bernatek, the uh, Commissioner General, mm -hmm. and asking him about this. I believe uh, he would be uh, glad to reply you. Yeah, yeah, that, that that's interesting. Because I know that there are a lot of uh, stamp clubs that uh, would like to actually uh, run the meeting there because it's. Uh, I mean, it's, it's one of the major events, uh, the first part of next year, obviously. So, um, yes, uh, I think I think it, it would be it, it would be quite popular. Yes, uh, as we all know, uh, because uh, it is uh, the so-called uh, lately the only uh, full uh, FIP show with all the classes, because mm -hmm. lately uh, people tends to. Uh, have just a uh, WSC uh, yeah, exhibition yeah. because the uh, patronage fee is uh, much cheaper. Yeah. Including uh, Thailand. Uh, next year, uh, Thailand will also have the uh, WSC uh, exhibition November yeah. 23rd to 28th. Yes. So yes. hopefully you guys uh, can participate <laughs> and sure. come to visit the exhibition. Yeah, sure. So sure. thank you very much for the, for the, the talk. Right. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Vakov. Uh, yes. So thank you, Dr. We're so glad to see you and mm. have you around with our meeting uh, and, and your sponsorship. Uh, so um, I think if, if there are no further questions um, from, from, uh, you know, from, from our members, you know, I, I wish you a, a good morning, good afternoon, and uh, a good evening. And uh, until next month, uh, you know, stay safe course and uh, you know just have, have have a great day and mm. see you next time okay bye 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 thank you everyone thank you, thank you. Bye. Bye, bye thank you bye bye thank you bye 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 bye, bye. bye.